Dehydrating starts tonight. So tomorrow I should be a space cadet. Anything I say from this point on is pretty much not valid. You're implying that you're not already a space cadet. That's true. <laughs> More so. That was really cool production though, the athletes meeting and I love seeing all the um, people that I've seen in the videos growing up in the industry and previous times I watched like Olympias. Uh, Linda Murray was there, eight time Miss Olympia. It was really cool. And I really like it. I think that this is sort of like my last chance. Sort of, it is my last chance to win um, my qualification to the Olympia. So what did you think of your number that you got? Lucky number 13. Unlucky for some. I used to think it was a bit weird 13 growing up, and then some lovely person that I married, my address was 13 something. So it was cool from there. Oh, something's some going wrong. We're trapped in the elevator. Hello? Hello. No, we're trapped in the elevator at the Grand Hyatt. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. What are the chances, man? Trapped in an elevator. Wow. Someone in my competition's paying the elevator people, aren't they? Oh. Oh, thank yay! You. Yeah. Legend. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Lucky number 13. Well, getting back to 11.16 SEM, he is... Is, is it fair to say Australia's greatest ever bodybuilder or on the road to be? I reckon he's very close to that now if he wins another pro show, which I think he's going to in three weeks when he competes in Florida and then qualifies again for the Olympia this year. So it's time to welcome back onto the airwaves the most muscular Australian. That's oh, other than you and me. <laughs> G'day big boy, thanks, for coming, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much for having me and um, thanks for also giving some exposure to the, the world of bodybuilding. We all appreciate it, so thank you. It is odd for sure and but what's what's normal really these days and also you know hitting hitting a ball over a net in the squares is odd if you think about it but it's just more <laughs> it is. it's just more I socialize so do you plan to not bodybuild at no, some point yeah I definitely plan not to not bodybuild at some time because it's it's something that you can't do forever it's very hard on a body there's quite a few creative or sporting areas where people can suffer from a thing called body dysmorphia mm. I think colloquially we call it with bodybuilders bigorexia, where you know they're never big enough. How will you go when you hang up the posing trunks for good and you go, you know, I'm not eating 27 times a day and I'm going to lose size and muscle and weight? I will love it. I will absolutely love it. Really? Yes, I will actually because um, I'm, I do this for a purpose and once the purpose is fulfilled, I no longer need to do it because it, it's such a challenging life. And I've had discussions with people about the bigorexia kind of thing. Mm. And, uh, and they automatically stereotype me. Obviously this guy is a big bodybuilder, he must be have body issues, but they don't understand the sport. They don't understand what goes into the competition. So for me, it's like trying to tell a sprinter to be slower. So it defeats the purpose of, of the competition. When is your next show? You in, got, in, yeah, three weeks. The Tampa Pro is the last show of the year and uh, I have to win it to, to qualify for the, the Olympia. The last show of the year before the Before Olympia. the Olympia, yeah, to qualify for, for the O. We need to take a break. When we come back, there's so much more to discuss with Josh Zanatowicz. He is in ripping form, as I said. Check him out. Let's on go, big breath, get through the nose, get the oxygen in. Bang. Posing is, it's the expression of, of, of your physique, all that hard work. It is, you're, you're presenting your physique in the best way possible. You know, I, I, I see bodybuilding as, as a triangle. So you have your, especially in, in contest prep, whether you're an amateur or whether you're a professional at Josh's level, you know, you have your dieting, your training and your posing, and it doesn't matter which way you spin that triangle around, it, all, all three are interconnected. 
I think Josh fa fares well, you know, considering he's one of the newcomers as they, they, they call him, he has a presence all of his own on stage. Anyone who watched the Olympia, you know, he has his, his own persona on stage and, and posing is individual, even though the, the poses are generic, they're individual to everyone's physique. And, and the way Josh poses, it's individual to his physique and it's what, the best way that he can showcase his. Pound for pound, dollar for dollar, I'd put him up against anyone and maybe I'm just a little bit biased, but you know, his ninth place last year at the, at the Olympia, that set a standard. We've been friends for a long, long time, over 10 years. As his physique has changed and as he's grown, you know, you need to constantly make adjustments. He's probably five, six, maybe 10 kilos heavier than what he was last year. You know, you can see it in his shoulders. And everything and then you know we have to make those adjustments again as you saw with his rear double bicep and so he doesn't shadow and doesn't lean too far back because your rear delts have grown so much now it casts a shadow over the top of your back so what we probably need to do is just slightly lean it forward do everything exactly the same but just lean it forward for me seeing him from all the prep work we did for the olympia last year to now just through his posing, I can see where he's made his gains. You know, yes, the training in the lead up and the dieting in the lead up, and then on the day, it's the posing. Doesn't matter how many plates you squat in the gym, you know, if you can't pose, it means nothing. It's a whole thing though, you want, you want to show how big you are. There's no, no point in closing it up, you know what I mean? Go, go back to what Arnold says in Pumping Iron, the little guy, yeah, like the, the big way. guy. That's true. You know what I mean? Thanks, mate, that's perfect. Been so busy with everything and getting like flights organised, accommodation for um, Tampa. It's good though because I get to catch up with Dallas, big country over there. So I'll go and stay with them for a bit and train out of um, the Dragon's Lair, Flex Lewis's gym. That'd be awesome. Learn, learn some things. I'm not nervous at all. It's just sick. So too bad. Suck it up, harden up, get the job done. Take that gravity. That's what I heard this saying once, it's always stayed with me. It's probably one of the first motivational quotes I ever read. And it said, what happens to the person is not as important as what happens within the person. Well, that was the best thing because it's like you can go through, two people can go through the exact same thing. And one can be optimistic, one can be pessimistic. One can look at it as a way to grow and get through it and be stronger. And the other person can just be weak and, and not get anything done out of it. So it's all a mindset. Kind of shitty when you're, because this close to a show, you're just only having two carb meals, you're tired and depleted, so you just tax slightly with your energy. And then you do more cardio and then you tax even more, and then just, and then you wake up and it just doesn't refresh, it just adds on to the next day. So, like the training and cardio, like I, I do love it. Like I'll be doing cardio and weight training anyway, but then not a deficit, that's what makes it hard, and then. Being consistent with it day in, day out, that's the, the toughest part, I think. They'll do one or two good days and then, like, I could do that. I could do it for like three months, and do it for then like six months, and then a year, and then 20 years. It's hard work. I think half the battle's just getting, especially when you're sick, just getting here and getting, and now that I'm halfway through my workout, so I feel much better for it already. ATP are going to be there for the first time in America and an Australian brand and they've gotten behind me and they've been amazing. Not just the products and stuff but just their attitude towards me, it's just as people checking in on me and seeing how I'm doing and positive reinforcement, encouragement. It's been, it's been amazing for them and, even, and they're like, you know, all going well you will win but even if you don't it's still, we don't really mind, you know, it's, we're going to have you on the stand at the Olympia. So that's really encouraging. It makes me want to do better for them. The people that support me, like, or a big part of it, like Liz and <coughs> friends, family, you know, Doherty's Muscle Mills and ATP, that's like, it's a team. Johnny with the coaching, like, you want to do good for everyone. And all my clients I train as well, like, you want to be a good role model for them as well. Big Nate. How you going, mate? How's going? How are you? How are you doing? How you feeling? Good, mate. You looking good or what? <laughs> uh, I've been under Josh's wing for almost a year now. Got my first competition this weekend in Bendigo, Bendigo Country Classic. So hopefully I don't disappoint him too much. 
I think the best thing about Josh is he always, you know, no matter how busy he is and he's prepping and traveling and, you know, doing all his competitions and he still has the time of day to catch up with all his clients. And with bodybuilding, everyone's so different. I think that's the toughest job with coaching is just under understanding, you know, your body and how it's different to someone else's body. And I think that's a really good thing about Josh. He's sort of pushed me beyond what I thought I was capable of. That's what I look for in a, in, a, in a coach. And obviously, you can't go past his knowledge and he's been there and done that. And now he's at the top of the game and the best in the country. So, you know, it's a great opportunity to be working under him and, yeah, learning from the best. He's only two or three weeks out from the Tampa and, yeah, he's still, still contacting me every day and getting my ass in the gym. I think everyone knows that about Josh. He's probably one of the most humble bodybuilders in the game and I think that's what he's sort of known for. Um, in the industry and you know that being said when when the time comes he'll he'll get the job done and, and stand up and he'll smash it and he'll get the um he'll qualify for the olympia and hopefully he does better than ninth hopefully he gets a top five it's such a common thing that the bodybuilder say it's, it's it's a mental game and it really is um you know you can have the best genetics and be hand fed everything in life but if you, if you don't have that mindset then you won't make it to the top Welcome back to Muscle in the Morning. I'm Dave Palumbo. This weekend, some new clips emerged of the Southern Pacific monster himself, Josh Lenardowitz. Lenardowitz was spotted making a guest appearance down at the IFBB Bendingo County Classic, where he gave everyone in the building a sneak peek at what he's planning to bring to the Tampa Pro less than two weeks from now. A 100% Josh Lenardowitz is easily one of the scariest guys on the planet. And I think I can speak for bodybuilding fans all over the world when I say that I personally cannot wait to see this guy in his stride on the Olympia stage. I mean, two hours transit, two days transit. It's fun. Walking through Boca, Florida, staying with some brother Dallas. It's been great. It's just been jet lagged. So I couldn't sleep. Probably what the last four days we've had like eight hours sleep, ten hours sleep, possibly. Re another reason why I'm staying until the Olympia. Because I'm um, really riding on getting this Olympia qualification at this show. Gotta push it today. So a couple of hours cardio, a couple of weight sessions. Don't want to do anything like that. It's all good. Make sure champion. And uh, just training here. Been training at Flex's gym, Project Flex, Dragon Slayer. That's great. So looking forward to more sessions with those guys. Because iron sharpens iron, and if you um, surround yourself with people who are positive and uplifting and want to be the best versions of themselves, it will ultimately rub off on you. And I hope I can bring something to the table for them as well. Great. Some day, I'm going to borrow the dumbbells from the gym. So I've been knowing it. I need some dumbbells to pop up. I'll bring it back. Chris Aceto and John Hansen from rxmuscle.com bringing you the preview show to the Tampa Open men's bodybuilding show. Who sticks out for you in terms of could come in here and, you know, a veteran who could win? Based on the hype, the pre-contest hype, it looks like it's Josh Leonardo with the show to win or lose because he's mm -hmm. got incredible size and he looks like he made an unbelievable improvement since the Olympia last year. So it's all a matter of him just coming in, dialed in. I, I think the person to beat because of overall thickness and it's still a muscle building show is Josh Lenardowitz. I agree. Our next competitor coming to us all the way from Australia is the king of the gym, Josh Lenardowitz. He looks huge and he looks very in striking distance for somebody who actually knows how to struggle and get down there. What was your uh, assessment of the win for Josh Lenardowitz? 
he looks uh, the most confident up there, and that shows. He's obviously got the most muscle. He, the guy's ge amazingly genetically blessed. I thought Josh showed that winning attitude. He had the one posing routine that really connected with the audience. Very, very connect with the audience. Yeah. Dorian-esque, like with, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. A lot of hard muscle and choreographed to boom, boom, boom. Right, and that was one thing I was disappointed with. Most of the guys, 90% of them, didn't have a good posing routine that connected, and he did. And he acted like a winner from the very beginning. He had a good attitude on stage, and I think the uh, size difference that he showed from the Olympia last year was very noticeable. One last comment, of course, is, so where does Josh get in the mix at the Olympia? What happens with Josh Lenardowitz at the Olympia this year? I think he could be third or fourth if he comes in harder. Wow. Seven or eight. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? We, we, there's just so much that can happen at the Olympia. Yeah. So If he nails it, I mean, obviously. I agree. If he nails it, he's amazing. I think Josh has a huge massive potential, and uh, you got to stay focused, right, like anything. Chris Aceto, RxMuscle.com, standing here with Josh Lenardowitz. What excites you about the Olympia? Um, man, the Olympia is just like a playground for bodybuilders. That's yeah. where you want to get to. That's the best of the best. That's your testing ground. Wherever you place in that show is like you're placing for the year, regardless of, well, I got this at this show. It's like, no, but this is where you place at the Olympia, and that means that you're that number of bodybuilder in the world. Um, so, yeah, it means a lot. There you have it, uh, Josh Lenardowitz winning shows, headed back to the Olympia. You've been there already. You've got experience. And it's easier to do the second time around. For me, it's always just been better than last time. It's always, like, like I say, it's cliche, but it is, it's true. It'll always be better and better every time. Sooner or later, it's going to pay off in a big way.